Good morning. Um, is it morning? I don't know. I have a serious question for the homeschool moms, the stay at home moms. And the reason I'm asking is because I follow homeschool moms and when I watch your videos, you always have your hair done. And I'm just wondering, do you do your hair to film YouTube or do you just do your hair? Yeah. Do you, like, and if you're not on YouTube, do you do your hair? every day at like do you curl it or straighten it or like do an updo or braid it or whatever whatever it is you're doing do you do that just every day or are the youtube moms like are you doing it for youtube because like i cannot be bothered to do this hair like so usually i'll pull it back but like this is this is just my my hair and like unless it's already curled previously like I, I don't curl it or I don't straighten it or anything so I'm just wondering that's a question for the moms who I see on YouTube and if you're not on YouTube and you're just you know stay-at-home mom or you know work from home mom even I can understand work from home moms because like sometimes you have to get on like zoom meetings and stuff and you like want to look put together and all that like for me now I have a very very light face of makeup on today but like I do my makeup every day because I like it and just makes me feel like more together um, and more productive but I don't do my hair hello angel I don't do my hair I usually just pull it back so I'm just curious are y'all doing your hair every day <laughs> just because or is there a reason <laughs> okay anyways let's get into the video today so we're going to do a k4 flip through I did K4 video the first time around doing K4 and I bought the whole entire like course set that came with the video manual and all of the children books. Oh. I showed those in the We Quit K4, um, We Quit Abeka K4 YouTube video that I've already filmed previously. I'm sorry, this, is, this video is kind of a mess already. <laughs> I go through those, I don't flip through them, but I show you what that kit comes with. If you're doing the K4 full year video instruction kit, I show you what all comes in there. That is not what I'm doing today. I am showing you the K4 parent led. Basically what I have here is the lesson plan book. I did do a flip through of K5 already. This is the lesson plan book. And then also the three, books that came with the child kit. So instead of all the books, it came with these three and readers and flashcards, like um, the mini alphabet flashcards. So yeah, this is what this is what we're looking in today. So let me also talk about our plans with K4 because you guys know my my five year old is in K5 and I also have a three year old. He wants to do big boy school. So when I pull out my son's K-5 books, and he knows that these are his, he saw them come in, and I was like, these are your books, Jay. He knows that this is his big boy school, and he wants to do big boy school so bad. So every single day when we're sitting down for school, he's like, do I get to do big boy school? And I'm like, I finally thought, you know what? How, like, how can I make this work? Okay, I'm getting hot holding her, so let me just put her down and regroup here. So he was really wanting to do big boy school, and my plan for him was to start a Becca K4 next year in January. We're going by calendar year for our homeschool. We don't go through, we don't follow the school year schedule. So my son, we're doing K5 between now and between now and December. And then we're starting first grade in January. I was like, I don't, I honestly don't think my three-year-old is ready for K-4. Like, I don't think I could get him to start this and then we start something new in January. So what I decided to do was take this very, very, very slow with him. We've been a week on this and so far it's going so well. He's learning and he's enjoying it and we've implemented the little games and everything like it is so good and what i love about k4 and k5 is a lot of the stuff if you start with k4 a lot of the stuff that you get in the k4 parent-led k5 
parent kit, like a parent essentials kit or whatever it is, you use with both K4 and K5. So it's great. Like you, you don't have to repurchase all of the materials. And I even think there are some things, of course not the lesson plans, but there are some things that you can use up to like grade, grade one and two. Basically, we're all using the same curriculum. Just my son has, my sons have different books, different grade level books. There's definitely a difference in like the overall content of what you learn in K4 versus K5. And when I'm finished with both programs, I will let you know like what the key differences are, but there is a link I can post um, below for like the scope and sequence for each grade. So you know exactly if you're in between, like you're trying to decide between K4 and K5, you can look at what is taught in each one and decide where your child actually fits better. Um, because if they already know a lot of what's taught in K4, this goes really slow. Um, and I'll kind of explain like how, how they teach phonics, but this is a lot slower pace than K5. And so I think it's going to be great for my son. And I am actually taking it even slower with him. And I'm going to have him do it all through the rest of this year and all through the rest of next year. We're taking it that slow because he is only three years old. He is not ready. Like he wants to do big boy school, but we are taking it so slow. So my plan for going through this with my youngest, I'm not my youngest, with my three-year-old is to do maybe one, <laughs> one or two of the subjects per day. So not even like lesson seven phonics, lesson seven reading, lesson seven writing, lesson seven numbers. For example, like we might do phonics and reading and then like writing in numbers. So my do phonics and reading one day and then like writing in numbers the next day or something like that. So I am taking it so slow to stretch it out over the course of basically two years. But he's loving it and he's already learning and it's so cute and he like is so excited to do big boy school. Like it's the most amazing thing. So let me talk real quick about how Becca teaches phonics based on what I know so far. And I'll show you some of the other resources that I have that help with teaching and why I like this program so much because I've already showed you K5. I love it. Like I did the unboxing. We went through K5 flip through. I love Abeka. I love their early like elementary phonics program. And I could honestly see us using Abeka for a long time, particularly with language arts and math. So one thing I want to note about how Abeka does phonics is they don't go letter by letter through the alphabet. They teach the vowels first and then the consonants. And so that way, when they start on blends, they already know the sound of the vowels that will help them make the blends easier. It's just, it's so genius. I don't know why like that's not done in every single curriculum, but um, so they'll just like practice their letter and they do a little like coloring activity like you says uh for umbrella. There's a sentence that they say when they learn this um, and it helps them and the picture of the, the picture of the umbrella helps them remember the sound of you like it's just I mean obviously those are all kind of like normal things but I absolutely love how it goes. Um, how it teaches phonics with the vowels first and the consonants second and then going into blends and all of that. Now a resource that I got in the K5 kit because I you could, you'll get this either in K4 kit or K5 I believe but I put it in this dirty little binder and I put them in these sheet protectors. I got all the phonics numbers charts and games and learning games. So I have like, these are the numbers ones. There's just a bunch of charts in here. I know this is kind of cut off, but there's tons of charts in here and tons of games that we use. And they're so, my kids are, my kids are loving that. They are absolutely loving that. And it's really helping them review and practice um, the things that they're learning in their lessons and it's really hammering hammering it in. 
So they're having a lot of fun with that. And even when there's a game, when I'm doing a K4 lesson with my three-year-old, if there's a game that we're playing with him, my five-year-old gets in. My five-year-old gets in on the the game too, and then I sort of like tweak the questions for him to be more his, like on his level. So I do both, and it's it's really easy to implement for both. Another resource that I want to show you real quick because I'm so excited about this. I opened this up and it showed you in the K5 um, video, but look at this. These are like the basic phonics cards and I put them in all these sheet protectors and put them in a binder. And I think this is just going to be such an amazing resource when it's time, like look at this. And these will be used. I don't know if they're used in K4 to be honest, but they are used for K5. So I just recommend having those if, um, if you're doing a Becca, I think it's gonna be really great. And then, the next two books that it comes with are the Manuscript Writing with Phonics K4 and the ABC Writing Tablet. I do have Manuscript. You can choose Cursive if you want to. Personally, I don't feel the need to teach Cursive. To A lot of people start their kids out with Cursive in K4 or K5, and I, I just feel like Manuscript is fine for us. Um, so I haven't had a change of heart in that yet. Um, we're only using this one right now and I think this one comes later. So right now, have we even touched this yet? We've done one page. Oh my gosh, and it was so cute. It was so cute, him learning. So you'll have their, this is exactly what their like little mini alphabet flashcard looks like. So they have a little sentence to remember this picture and then they can like practice over here. And one thing I highly recommend adding if you don't have it is the manuscript, and they also have this in cursive, the manuscript formation flashcards. This is amazing. Let me just grab one that we had out today that we used. So um, I use this with both my K5 and K4. In the lesson planner, it tells you how to teach the writing. So this is upstairs, downstairs, and the basement and then they have like the ceiling of upstairs the dotted line the pink carpet and like the i don't know what they call this line down here in the basement but we haven't gotten there <laughs> but um so you can use this big flash card and let them trace their fingers on it like as you explain and it's just super super nice to have this really big card and i just set it down like in front of him I'll let him trace it with his finger. I'll let him turn his pencil around on the eraser side and practice tracing it with the eraser side of his pencil. And then I give it, give him the worksheet and he practices writing his letter. And then this one is kind of like a little bit more like activity wise. I don't know, it's super cute. So there's just a little bit more in here, but they don't start this until later. So. Um, yeah, like I just, everything that we're using is so good. It's so exciting. Um, and I will show you also how I'm organizing the papers. So because it is a lot of worksheets and, um, there's gotta be a way to organize all these worksheets, right? So I actually use this little, um, I love these. I've been using these kinds of, uh, notebooks since college. This is the five star, like, it's like a flexible little binder um, and I love it. So it comes with these little dividers. I kind of separated them between the two. This is my K, my son's K5 one. And so I just punch holes in their papers and then I stick them in here. So I have, this is the phonics and then I separated it into writing and then numbers over here. So um, those are like, the three areas so every time i have thought about going through each workbook and going ahead and tearing all the pages out and punching holes in them and putting them in here but right now i'm just tearing them out one by one and as we complete them i put them in here it gives me a little bit more work to do but i don't honestly don't mind and at the end this binder will be like full of all his papers and they'll be organized and it's all right here 
and super, super easy. So I have one for my K5, one for my K4, and so far I love that. Now let's do the flip through, the actual sit down, flip through, let you look at it portion of this video. Okay. Let's look at the K4 phonics, reading, writing, and numbers curriculum slash a lesson plan. So this book is just so great. I've had it for a little bit and I honestly believe I do have a little bit of writing in here somewhere. I bought this um, secondhand off of a, a Becca Facebook group. I do recommend if you're considering a Becca to get on the Facebook groups that Abeka has. There's like homeschool, Abeka K4, K5, and so on Facebook groups. And a lot of times they'll do, they'll sell um, their old curriculum and stuff for a lot cheaper than you can get it from online. So um, yeah, this is just really, really great. So these are the books that this covers. So these are gonna be like your reading, these are the readers. And then there's a readiness skills that's used in the activities section of this book. I did have this book before when I was doing the video manuals. I am not using it this year. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just doing the ABC one, two, three and like the writing in here. So a little bit. So this is really similar to the Abeka K5. Why Christian homeschoolers should use a standard curriculum and ensures that a child will be taught new material in each grade level. And there will be sufficient review of old material each year. So I love that about Abeka. They really make sure your child is learning. They're not just like doing the work throughout the year and then they're forgetting it the next year. Everything builds on top of each other. So I really love this. And then why Christian homeschoolers should use a Christian curriculum, character training, all of this. This is really great stuff to read if you're new to homeschooling and new to using Abeka. You have your scope and sequence over here. So it tells you what is going to be taught in each six week block in phonics, writing, and numbers. Really great. These are textbooks and materials that you can get. So a lot of things it says it's like optional. Um, so, you know, a bunch of support materials that you can get through here. Um, I don't have all these, like I don't have the one word vowel cards or the two word vowel cards. You could honestly just make flashcards for those things if you want to. Um, I don't have the blend practice cards because we have the blend ladders, you know, those are all things you could add on if you want to, but if you're trying to do a Becca on a budget, you may not need those things. So your suggested daily schedule, I really like that they have this, um, they have a suggested order plus the time that it should take. And then, um, if you're combining grades in homeschool, they just give you a sample and like how you would combine the schedules if you're doing a Becca with each um, grade level. Another homeschool planning calendar. I've used this to plan my year this year for K5. I haven't done it for K4 because we're super relaxed with K4 this year, but I have went ahead and used the sample calendar to plan out K5 because we're fitting it all in this year. And then a parent overview, this is really, really good. If you use the Abeka Bible, they do um, have a separate Bible curriculum. It is not included here. So this is a great Bible curriculum though. So I do recommend looking into that if you're looking for a Bible curriculum. Um, so it tells you what you're gonna be basically doing each day, habits and procedures, Bibles, phonics, Bible. <laughs> then you have it just goes more in depth about all of this and into even grading. It tells you, we use a lot of phonics songs. So we'll use a song every single day at the start of our phonics lesson. So um, you would learn these songs and just, um, I know them because I heard them in the uh, K4 video instruction. So I already know them by heart, but it tells you what the songs are and what the tune is so you can easily incorporate it. And then into reading, handwriting, numbers, numbers review, all of that. So there's also seat work and that begins in lesson 80. So that's when they start working with their writing with phonics, um, K4 and the ABC one, two, three activities by themselves. And then activity time, which is like optional. We'll do some of it maybe, but maybe not. 
And then these are little word lists. I think that's really good. Words beginning with the following letters that they will be learning. And then words ending with the following letters. Long vowel words, words with two vowels together. A cursive formation guide. I believe if you are doing the manuscript, you will get another manuscript lesson plan. I do not have that book. I only have the one for K5, so I'm following the lesson plan here, but I'm basically just teaching it myself with manuscript and using what I have for that. The suggested writing comments, I think this is so nice, and these have come super in handy for me so far um, with teaching K5 handwriting. So this is lesson one. It, start, it tells you like K4 daily plans, so what to have ready every single day have your flashcards ready have crayons ready um, pencils all of that you can make a name tag if you want and then you'll start your lesson one with habits it'll tell you exactly how to teach good habits and we do a lot of simon says then you'll go into phonics and it'll also tell you to start with um, habits everything that is printed in bold is what you would say to your child and of course you can say things in your own like in your own wording if you'd like so you just have phonics for lesson one and then activity time which is optional so same thing a lot of these like lesson two and lesson three they all start with habits and then phonics and then activity time it's like very straightforward habits phonics activity time all the way through the first week as you're getting used to it and then lesson six, you still want to like enforce the good habits that you learn throughout the week, but you're gonna do phonics, phonics review, handwriting is introduced, and then numbers is also introduced. And then you have your activity time, which is optional at the end. And so it just keeps going. This is where we're at, as you can see. I use a paper clip to mark my spot. You wanna make sure that you look into these lessons before you get started with your day and have things ready because I find that if you're not looking ahead and knowing what is coming up for the day, then you're kind of like letting your kids just sit there and their time, the amount of time a child can like sit is pretty fleeting. So um, be prepared for the day by looking ahead into the lessons on what you need and just have it ready and set out ready to go so that you can just follow along with the lesson as quickly as you can. This is basically what it looks like in all of the lessons. So you can see as you flip through, you just got all this stuff. And then when you get to the end, there are some, some things back here. So in the appendix, so if your last lesson, it ends on lesson 170. And then it tells you what's in the appendix. You have oral phonics evaluation and test sheets if you are doing tests. Um, the blend ladders, planning calendars. So the evaluation sheet you can use there. These are, yep, still the, each lesson has their evaluation sheet, so. And then you have oral phonics sheet. So this is what you're using for the phonics test. And it'll tell you in the lesson what to do for these. So it'll basically have your child say the name of the letter and the sound that it makes and you'll go through each one and you'll just check off each letter as they do it. So it makes it really, really simple for you to administer the evaluation. And as you, you'll have some blends and some words as you get to these last um, lessons here. And then I already have a blend ladder pulled out, but they do have all of the blend ladders here. So these are good. You can take them out, laminate them, or you can keep them in the book, but you will be using these a lot in both K4 and K5. I like that both books include them. And then we've got some, you can take this out. They're like little letter flashcards, I guess. And you can cut them out if you want to. We've got short vowel pieces. I don't know necessarily what this is for, but that's there if you need it. The homeschool planning calendar. I, I make copies of this so I don't have to write in this one. Um, but yeah, you got your homeschool planning calendar here and that's just really nice to have so you can um, 
you know, you could keep attendance with this or you can put down what lesson that you wanna use with this or whatever works best for you. So very, very good. Now going into the ABC 123, this is just a really cute book. So we've already torn out the first page and it was um, for the numbers lesson that we did. So this is the first letter they learn. They learn I first and they have the inchworm that goes with I. So basically they're just going to color it and um, that's their fun little worksheet for the day. And so it's going to be the same thing each time they learn a new letter or a new number. They're going to come in and they're going to see it, color it, count the bears. So same thing here. They've got their U, their umbrella, three gingerbread men. Oh, another thing I want to say, if you're following the calendar of year, a lot of this will make more sense because towards like Christmas time, they will have more Christmas time type like activities and like Valentine's Day, Easter, stuff like that. So they will have like the traditional holidays in their curriculum following the normal school year, the school calendar. So this is more so um, for like a traditional school year calendar, but you know, that doesn't really matter if you're doing it like me where you're um, following the traditional like calendar year. You get a little bit more difficult with the activities as you get here. Circle the correct number of objects. So you have a blend sheet and they'll color like the fox's clothes. It's just for them to like remember what blend ladder they're on. So stuff like that. So they'll have to count these watermelon seeds and color the picture. So all of this just becomes just a little bit harder throughout the year but all in all, not too difficult at all. So really good. Now here is the writing tablet. This is the first thing you start with if you're doing writing with a Becca in K4. Um, so it really goes through each letter that you're learning one at a time. So I, U, E, and there's typically a few pages of each letter because they really do a lot of review. So a page of A, another page of A, another page of A, and then when, once you get, I think you learn A last maybe, no you don't, you learn I, U, E, A, and then you do O, but there, see how they review this before they even get to the letter O, and then another page of I, E, A, U, and then they start O. There's a little Bible verse at the bottom, which I love, and then several mm -hmm. pages of O. And then another review page, I, U, and E. And then we introduce T, which is cool. So um, no matter how small we are, God loves us. I just love that they include that kind of thing. Um, so there's tons of reviews. So even though you learn a new letter, you're coming back to the letters that you've already learned because it's making sure that you are constantly reviewing reinforcing what you've learned already and so we're learning a new letter here and it's all about l all about l and then l and then we have we're back to a over here and then l and we're back to o up here and then we've got b b b a b i n n n n e and then we've introduced a blend over here and so, and you'll see like they have like their blends here. So there's always, always review. So it's just very, very good. Very thorough. I love it. The last book we're looking at is the writing with phonics. And this doesn't start, I forget what lesson it said, but this doesn't start until a uh, lesson 80 and they will, you know, practice writing, tracing. And this is manuscript. So I do appreciate the tracing is in manuscript and not cursive. But just a little bit more on the activities side. But as you can see, like we're already in lesson lesson 80 and we're doing more review. So that's number. That's numbers. But more review. O, A, A, B, C. It goes through the letters, it seems, in alphabetical order for this one, but it's just super review. So this starts after they've learned the alphabet, 
but it's just extra review. So it's so good. Okay, so that was the flip through of the books. If you were anything like me and you feel like academics, strong <laughs> academics and success in education is important to you for your children, there are gonna be a lot of homeschoolers who you know, want the more gentle approach. They don't think academics should be so hard. Um, but I really do value a good, solid education and academic success. I do value that for myself and I do value that for my children. And I think Abeka is just a fantastic curriculum to ensure that your kids are set up for success academically. If you are more like you want to follow your child's lead, if you want to have a more gentle approach to homeschooling, if you kind of are more free spirited and follow the more like Charlotte Mason type of approach to homeschooling, then a Becca is probably not the choice for you. It is a very like mastery, very um, academic excellence, like focused and it's a very solid sound program, Christian program, which I value even more so than anything else. And there is a lot to it, but the beauty of homeschooling is that even though there is a lot to it, if you're not accredited, you can make it your own. You can skip lessons, you can skip worksheets, you can skip seat work if you don't feel it's necessary. And I do a lot of that as well. Um, you don't have to do every single lesson perfectly, every single worksheet, you can tailor it to your child. Please don't pull my shirt down. But it does give you everything you need to make sure your child will be successful and learn so, so well. Um, not that your children can't learn with another curriculum, of course they can. I just trust this so wholeheartedly and I'm really like, you can tell how passionate I am about it. Abeka is just top notch for me, in my opinion. And I'm so glad we're doing it this way this year. I may talk in another video about future plans with Abeka. Perhaps we might be going back to video instruction in the future, but while the kids are young and their attention spans are so short, parent led for me is the way to go. It just makes so much more sense. I can really see and feel and experience the cues that they are giving me in terms of what we're working on and make the changes that we need to make to make it more successful and more fun and all of that. So um, how I did it before did not work, but it now looking back, it almost seems obvious that of course that wouldn't work. My four-year-old child can't sit you know, and watch 30 minute long lessons every single day for multiple subjects. So of course it doesn't work if you have a child that's like mine, but parent led, if you're thinking about it, if you're considering it, I would say try it out, especially if phonics mastery is really important to you. Um, I would say give it a go, give it a try. You would probably love this curriculum just like I do. So that is it for this video. If you have any questions about Abeka K4 or K5, or even if you're interested in doing it for another grade and you have questions or concerns about it, please leave um, a comment below. Bob. Bob. Thank you so much for being here, for sticking through this, for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Can you say bye bye? Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh. <laughs>